Welcome to ESPN's coverage of men's college soccer. We are outside Philadelphia tonight in Chester, Pennsylvania, live from Talon Energy Stadium. This is the 2017 NCAA Men's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Four teams this weekend representing four conferences. Semi-final number one, it is number three Stanford against number four Akron. Here's a look at our brackets and how the teams got here. They represent four different conferences from around the country. We start out with Stanford looking for a third straight national title against Akron. And then the nightcap, it is North Carolina and Indiana. And welcome in everybody. I'm Glenn Davis alongside me. She's former U.S. Women's National Team World Cup winner, former player at Notre Dame, Kate Margraff. And as we both know, and as you know, back in 2015, Stanford and Akron met in the semifinals. Stanford would ultimately win on penalty kicks. They would go on to win the national championship in Kansas City. But speaking to Akron's head coach, Jared Emick, yesterday, he mentioned that they didn't leave it all on the field that night against Stanford, and they aim to change things here tonight. Well, this is a very possession-oriented team. They build everything off the pass, but tonight they're going to be more aggressive. They felt last time they played the Cardinals, they were way too conservative. So we're going to see a team that's going to push a little bit higher and a little bit faster earlier than we normally see from the Zips. Stanford has won a ton of Pac-12 honors. Of course, Jeremy Gunn, the coach of the year. Names like Scundrich, Baird, they're all very familiar with this team. Beeson, all Pac-12 first 10, and Tomas Hilliard Arson. But Foster Langsdorf is one to really keep an eye on. Well, this team is decorated all over the field, and they excel at both ends, especially up top with Foster Langsdorf. He is just always in the right place at the right time. And what's beautiful about him is that he is not afraid to get in the dangerous, scary parts inside the box, always up for the challenge, always sitting in the back shoulders of defenders, but he does not get enough credit for how clinical he is in front of the net. And Jeremy Gunn reminding us of that. Akron, Joao Moutinho, a big signing they got. Manuel Cordero up the spine of the team as well. And Akron under Jared Embick is a team that's got some great strikers in Sam Gainford and Stuart holt -Husen. Well, those two internationals up top lead the offense. They're responsible for 22 out of 50 goals for the Zips. They just bring a little bit of extra sophistication and savvy with their runs. They're very difficult to knock off the ball, and they are going to be the outlet and the targets that you're going to see leading this team. Can they get it done against a very physical Stanford back line? Stanford and Akron coming up next. We'll take a look at the starting lineups from Chester, Pennsylvania. Hi guys. So this is the all new Chevy Equinox. It's gorgeous. It offers rear seat reminder, built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi, Apple CarPlay compatibility, and team driver technology. It's crazy. Yeah. Now, to get all of these features, you'd need all six of those crossovers. That's insane. <laughs> yep, and you still wouldn't get everything that's in this Equinox. Wow. Wow. Six cars in one. Yeah. Use your employee discount for everyone to get $4,500 below MSRP on this 2018 Chevy Equinox. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. What do you think? Think Ben'll like it? Yeah. Was I the only one hearing the angelic music? I'm serious. I never know what to get him. Just tell me you got him Fios, too. Mm. This is lame. Fios is a 100% fiber optic network. That plus this thick console, he'll be like, what? Your new tech is best on the 100% fiber optic network. So get Fios. Now just $79.99 per month with a two year price guarantee with a two year agreement. Welcome back to Chester, Pennsylvania, the national semifinal number one here just outside Philadelphia in Chester, presented by Northwestern Mutual, and dreams trying to be realized this weekend by these young student athletes. Stanford is looking for a third consecutive national title, and here is their starting lineup under the head coach, Jeremy Gunn. Well, Stanford is so senior strong with leadership right down the spine of the team. That is the strength of it. You'll see Langsdorf and Baird running the channels and trying to drag the center backs around up top. Scundrich, the unsung hero for this team, does all the dirty work. And Corey Baird is having a phenomenal season up top, coming back from injury. Coach says playing some of the best soccer, but watch Hilliard Arce. He anchors a back line that has only given up .42 goals a game. He has the ability to shut down the best forwards in the country. 
They are number two in the nation defensively, but they have scored three goals more than nine times this year. There is the head man, Jeremy Gunny. He has won titles at the Division II level and the Division I level. Gets credited for rebuilding this Stanford Cardinal program. Akron, the Zips, come in at 18, 3, and 2 under their head man, Jared Embick. A very international heaven team with 13 internationals on it. Very strong down the center. Holes and Gainford, so impactful up top. Cordero pulls the string. Bolano anchoring in front of that back line. Protecting Moutinho, the freshman, is has unbelievable distribution, able to start the attack. And he is the piece that brought it all together. A late signing, but he's quick and he's agile. And he is the one that's going to start most of the attack from the left-hand side. Jared Embick, his fifth NCAA tournament after taking over for Caleb Porter. And prior to that, it was Ken Lola. So Akron has just had a wonderful program with wonderful coaches for many years. Embick aiming to attack today with Akron. We'll take a break. Some of the Zip fans have made it here to Chester. More to come, including the opening kickoff. Stanford Akron coming up. With the mini Epic Experience Pass, you get more out there, more in here, and here. More memories, more off the grid, more zen, more moments to discover, more of what matters. Right now, get a mini Epic Experience Pass, plus up to $1,500 cash off select 2018 Mini Countryman. Go back to 2016, Houston, Texas, the Men's College Cup. Stanford taking on Wake Forest. It would go to penalty kicks. Andrew Epstein stopping Hayden Park, Partain. Sam Warner stepping up for the Cardinals, slams it home. Epstein will deny Dunwell, and Stanford would win on penalty kicks 5-4 and become the national champions in the Lone Star State. And of course, Players like this man, Tomas Hilliard Arce, a big part of it. Game on here in Chester, Pennsylvania. Your referee, Robert Sabiga, Stanford in the red and black hoops. It is Akron in white here. Seventh straight match. That Stanford has gone with the same lineup here, so a lot of consistency for Jeremy Gunn. Akron go back to their goalkeeper from Germany, Ben Lund. And this is uh, the challenge here today, is breaking this pressing game of Stanford with this wonderful possession-based Akron. look for here early in this game Kate especially let's start with Akron. Well Akron's going to need to get on the ball and connect some passes but not just from their back to their midfield they're going to need to see if they can break that midfield pressure of Stanford and use their forwards link up that play and that'll buy them some confidence they need a possession with a purpose and advance the ball and stay composed under pressure in their game against Louisville Louisville wasn't able to get them the zips to put their head down the pressure didn't come fast or organized enough consistently and then almost bunkering down. Stanford will not do that. Stanford has won it back in a very good area here. It's a shooting opportunity. Huge save there from Lunt. So the best chance of this game coming initially here to Stanford. Those uh, game keys brought to you by and planned for success by Northwestern Mutual. And on to Stanford. We've already had one great chance here, Kate. Yeah, and you liked this when I said this last night in the meeting. They press to dispossess you in your own half, and then they play. This is a very technical side, but they like to express that technique more often in the attacking third. There's a bit of sophistication with their runs, as well as awareness on where there needs to be a run. You'll see a lot of back 
post runs or Skundrits filling in the gaps that are left from the onrushing attackers. Right, Stanford's planning for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. So one good chance already here for the Stanford Cardinal. Clock ticks down in the college game, unlimited substitution. In the first half, if you come off, you cannot re-enter. In the second half, you can re-enter once. So uh, substitution patterns do become very important for managers like Jeremy Gunn of Stanford. Really downplayed, Kate, uh, the fact that they're trying to do the three-peat here and win a third consecutive national title. Yeah, you know, we did ask him. We're like, how's it being a three-peat? He's like, no, it's just about winning one game at a time. And that's the right way to frame it for your athletes. Make sure that they're just playing each game, not getting nervous. Because a lot of young players, especially ones with less experience, are going to get terrified if you know you're playing for national championships. you got to break it down game by game. And right now the Zips are trying to create something to play out of this. And once they're able to get Cordero on the ball, he really is the key for them in the midfield. He'll sit and he'll, cut, he'll shield that back line, but he's so sophisticated with his passing and movement. They have yet to find him. They need to change a little point again, change the point against Stanford and open up some space. And now playing between the lines here. That's a nice ball hit over the top by Cordero. He was trying to pick out there the run of number 11, Marcel Zajac, who is a bit of a wild card for Akron. Can do some special things, has a tendency to drift out of games. But right there, Akron proving that he could break the pressure of Stanford. Langsdorf providing the pressure here, stepping up as Baird now. They'll go all the way back to the goalkeeper, Ben Lund, from Berlin, Germany. 0.15 goals against average at six foot six in goal for Akron. Loss of possession, not in the best of places by Devera. Going home is Joao Moutinho. He's up for the Mac Herman Award. Semi-finalist. Strachan will shield it out for Akron. Team uh, with nine seniors here. They were not seated in the top four. They were not happy about it. They felt that uh, when they played Louisville and Ken Lola that they should have been the home team in that game. But they ended up winning on penalties to advance here to the NCAA College Cup. Trying to get out of their own third of the field here. And they'll switch play out wide now. Nico Devera, senior. Checking back and allowed to get turned here is Holthusen. Great switch of play from Holthusen. Ackman's got some numbers in front of the ball here. Zajac will knock it back. And it's Strachan, the freshman from Lakewood, Ohio. goes a little bit more direct to Zajac. 19th appearance for him from Canada, but it's one back by Stanford now. Tomas Hilliard to Arce. Pau Balana now. Barcelona, Spain. So a bit of confidence through passing here after some real initial pressure from Stanford, Kate. But the Zips have yet to find Gainford on the ball. Holt Houston has been able to receive it once. So two of their best players just need to find the game a little bit. And the Zips are going to have to find that balance between playing pretty soccer and connecting short passes towards stretching out Stanford a little bit, pushing them back. If their movement isn't doing it, then it has to come from the pass. It's when angled towards the corner flag, Baird, who's uh, very good using his body, will come out of there. Quickly surrounded by two and three Akron zips. Gilby had that wonderful early chance for Stanford. 
Cordero will knock it wide. One of the leaders in midfield for Akron as they switch play now here. Joao Matinho, so good on the ball, was actually brought in to be an outside back. But due to another recruit not coming to Akron, he was moved into the middle. And they say, Kate, that this really changed their entire season, his play and his adaptation to the central defense of the position. Well, he's able to hit those passes that break more than one line. Holt Fusen laid it back. And this one, errant ball will go all the way back to Stanford's goalkeeper, Nico Corti, who took over for last year's hero, Andrew Epstein, who was an All-American. He's a redshirt senior. He came in with Epstein, had a lot of injury problems, but has stepped in wonderfully, and you saw there, has 12 shutouts. Well, he's had a stellar senior campaign. Coach talked about how much he appreciated that he accepted his role while desperately looking to expand it were his words. And that's what you want out of a teammate. You want someone that's there to support you, but is also pushing you. Tremendous moment for him, and it's his moment in the sun here at this NCAA College Cup. Had some knee surgery. Space here on the left side now for Sam Gainford. Gainford to Cordero. Good on the ball, tough tackler in midfield for Akron. Gave it away that time. One back by Gilby. Over the top towards Langsdorf, and he will run everything down. Well, it was fun inter interviewing a lot of the players yesterday and Jeremy Gunn uh, saying, hey, you know, Langsdorf is more than just a runner. He is a, a clinical finisher and he doesn't get enough credit for that. I think it's more his tactical awareness. He always is in the right place in the box and then he has the skill set to convert balls in the air, not afraid to get on to some scary challenges. Devera now, crossing opportunity, whips in a good looking ball, a header will flash wide to the left of Nico Cordy. But this time Akron gets their left back into the attack, Nico Devera, and it leads to a wonderful opportunity. A little change of point ball, and look at that space on the flanks. You can see Marion trying to track back, Pancho trying to get there, just too far away from goal, not able to redirect it right back across try to hit that back across perhaps or in deflection or if there's not enough power at maybe their teammate running onto it Devera had the winning penalty kick against Louisville he's a senior part of the Portland Timbers Academy here's Devera now Cordero it's doubled up there it's one back by Bryce Marion. Marion finds Musharafa to Tomas Hilliard Arce. Baird will flick it on towards Langsdorf, and you can see those two very connected there, 10 yards apart. Bellana now will go direct. Tried to drop it over the head there of Adam Musharafa. And here is Musharafa now. Hilliard Arce flick on towards Langsdorf. He's going to run this one down. Foster Langsdorf, 13 goals, six assists on the year. to the far post. Bryce Marion now on the end line, defended well there by Devera. Akron wanting a foul there, Robert Sabiga, the referee, looking it off. Field in wonderful condition here on the banks of the Delaware River. Goes direct again towards Baird. The 
37 degrees here, and it'll probably drop down into the lower 30s here tonight. They've expected some snow showers in and around the area. As Moutinho will switch the play here for Akron. It's an area you don't want to give it away to Stanford. And Skundrich was trying to come forward. Cardinal going to get a free kick here. Zips decided to go a little bit long, a bouncing ball, just too late of a challenge from Zajac. But now a wonderful opportunity for Stanford, very comfortable getting on the end of these, looking for Langsdorf to run off. Skundrich free on that back post. It's driven into the box and an offside flag up, it'll be Free kick, Tomas Hilliard, Arce, uh, obviously a target, a guy that can score goals when he does get forward for Stanford. He's got four on the year. And as you look at Jeremy Gunn, former coach at UNC Charlotte, also Division II Fort Lewis, won a national title there. 18 seasons for Jeremy Gunn in the college game. So Akron has had an outstanding season. They stumbled out of the gates early on. They lost their first two games of the year, including one to Denver, who got to the College Cup final last year. But here's what they did in the NCAA playoffs. First round, they had a bye, took on Seattle 3-0, 3-2 over Wisconsin. And you and I had done a Wisconsin game. Very <laughs> tough game there. A very physical team. Yep. And then the big one over Louisville to get here on penalty kicks. Part of that reason they were had such a high seed but thought they deserved more as they were undefeated at home so they were so disappointed when they got the fifth ranking and Louisville got the fourth which means they wouldn't host that but what's fascinating to me is that this is a team that went undefeated once Sam Gainford came back in the lineup he was injured in the start of the season that's part of the reason why they started so slow but when they added him and Holt Houston together up top with Devera coming up on the left com combining with them this is when this team started to put together some wins we took, spoke to Sam Gainford and Stuart Hulfhusen, and they both said there was real pressure on us early in the year after we lose to Utah Valley and we lose to Denver in our first two games. And there was even a little bit of a slight panic, and they got the ship righted under their coach, Jared Embick. It was two years ago, it was Jordan Morris. Brandon Vinson, who would beat Clemson 4-0 in the final in Kansas City. Of course, Jordan Morris, part of the Seattle Sounders, who will be playing for the MLS Cup tomorrow in Toronto against Toronto FC. Swiveled out of there, a blind ball, but they gave it away. Maybe an opportunity here for Akron to attack quickly, but it's one back. Ben Lunt and Goal has had two postseason shutouts against Seattle and Louisville. Ten on the year. We mentioned that of Berlin, Germany. He's given up less than a goal a game. Cordero now. More international flair on the ball. He gives it up to Harder. It's wide. It'll be whipped in towards the back post. And delivery doesn't hit the right area. Out for a goal kick for Stanford. Stanford opened up advancing on penalty kicks in the NCAA tournament against Pacific and dispatched Coastal Carolina. And then the big one, they, they did it to Wake Forest again, Kate. Well, that's Thomas Hilliard Arce. In particular, he shut down Baccaro, one of the best attackers in the game. And it was a rematch the year before. And last year when they won, they didn't score a single goal in the, run, in the College Cup. It came off of PKs, just a solid defensive effort. Two years ago, it was more of an attacking side you're referencing Jordan Morris. So this year, it's a bit of a mix. They say they're a better team this year, have a bit more balance on the attacking and defensive side. Hard. Hard. 
I mean, they've got some very experienced seniors here who have been a part of these national championships. Here's Akron now, circulating the ball nicely. Devera joining in here on the left now. Here's Devera. The box checking back to it was Holt Houston. Akron now here looking very promising to the end line. We'll try to square it back. And cut out and then cleared by Gilby. So Akron showing us uh, that they can get themselves to the end line. Well, they can possess, but that was the first time we saw them actually build in the final third and connect passes. Not as dangerous due to Stanford reading the passing channels and sitting in the threatening zones that they were trying to hit. Jared Emmick did tell us that he, he felt that the last college cup they were a little bit too cautious a little bit gripped maybe by fear and that today they were going to try to get players in, in advance of the ball and really try to stir this game up again it's against the two-time defending national champions Talented Sam Werner trying to get forward there. The redshirt junior from Bozeman, Montana. Into the box. Shooting opportunity or flower wide. And pushing into the attack there that time. Again, Foster Langsford, Langsdorf. Looking for goal number 14 on the year. He had one against Coastal Carolina. Missouri proved dangerous here in the first half on a couple of occasions. Gameford was looking for a foul, won't get it. Bryce Marion, Langsdorf, so elusive there, made nice space for himself. What a ball to Bryce Marion. It's a chance to make it one. And Lunt, I believe, got a piece of that and comes up with a very, very big save here for Akron early here after Stanford carving out a wonderful opportunity. Well, this started off a dispossession. Bryce Marion looking to slip. Look at a nice little ball to Baird. And Lunt with a little bit of a kick save, able to deflect it wide, comes off his line, cuts down the angle. Baird frustrated he wasn't able to convert that, but there was honestly so little space in order to get it wide of Lunt. Cardinal off the corner, went towards the near post. Cleared, but uh, two very clear good chances here in the first half for Stanford. That time, Corey Baird, who was outstanding against Wake Forest in the Elite Eight. The difference between the attack of the Zips in the final third and that of Stanford. Stanford's just quicker. They're doing it faster. Can the Zips play a little bit faster when they get in that final third? Because you see, they're pretty well organized defensively. And Stanford's able to break them down quickly with that one and two touch passes and then the excellent movement of Baird and Langsdorf up top. Can the Zips do the opposite on the other end? We know they can pass between the back and the midfield third, but can they do that play a little bit quicker in the attacking third? Pancho is helped on by Baird. Bryce Marion trying an early ball there. There's no hesitation uh, from Stanford trying to get the goal quickly. Bryce Marion to the end line. It's one back by Marion and then cleared. And it'll be a free kick here for Akron. Foul there on the captain, Drew Skundrich. Just a handball by Skundrich. Inadvertent, but it does stop. Oh, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's on purpose. At first I was just thought it was flailing arms. But you get to see how quick he closes down the space. Runs miles a game. Coach calls him the unsung hero. He closes up that pocket. And what's impressive about him is his back checking, to use a hockey term. Sorry, I'm in the middle of hockey season. But he comes back even when the ball's past him. He's going to help dispossess from the defensive angle. Stanford going with a little bit of a direct ball here. Marion will bring it down. They get into this third, though. They can make things happen in tight areas. He'll be coming out of there. Hilliard Arce. I think 
a few Major League Soccer teams are very interested in him. Bryce Marion right now. Squares at top of the box, shot is blocked. Pancho will let fly again. It was covered there by the goalkeeper, Ben Lunt, out for a goal kick. NCAA Men's College Cup is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live differently, and in part by Dr. Scholes. Akron has two busloads of students that made it down here to Chester, Pennsylvania. So awesome, you can hear them. It's a good look at them. All four programs here are very storied in this NCAA tournament. And there's Langsdorf again. Uh, makes it very difficult for defenders to relax. That time got the tackle in on Moutinho. Devera knocked it forward. Gained for Cordero, used his body, tried to slip a pass in there. But Hilliard Arce broke it up. The run being made that time. Last seven men's college cup champions, there they are. All illustrious programs, including Akron and Stanford. And North Carolina, Indiana in there, and they'll be the back end tonight of these two outstanding semifinals. Such a joy yesterday talking to uh, all these players and coaches of these programs. And, and one thing that just truly emanated out of everybody is just the pride that they have in playing for their university and college. And in particular, these programs. Well, excellent seasons for all of them. All four teams finished the season ranked in the top 10, deservedly earned their right to be here. And this is another thing that Stanford wanted to do was create chances to earn set pieces bring Tomas Hilliard Arce up so good at reading the surface of the ball and getting on the end of it with the timing of his runs sort of a mix of uh, zonal marking here and man-to-man -man marking here five shots so far for Stanford here they are off the corner to the back post it's a big win it's a shooting opportunity takes a deflection over the top could have went anywhere Big opportunity for Stanford and Tanner Beeson. What I like is that they're going to the back post. Look at the Zips have no one sitting on that back post. They should have hit it straight. And they're able to get something on it in the left back. Tanner Beeson, the redshirt sophomore, very composed, able to hit a low shot and earn his team another corner kick. He'll be off the corner. There's a whistle. It'll be a free kick here for the Zips. Saturday, we have an afternoon doubleheader of hoops. Number one, Duke taking on Boston College at noon Eastern from Chestnut Hill. Then it's Indiana and Louisville. Both games on ESPN streaming live on the ESPN app. Here comes Stanford. Corey Baird to the back post. A diving header. Spectacular goal from Langsdorf. The Cardinal hit first here in Chester. Well, the key for them was to press to dispossess, and look at the pressure. That all comes from the captain, Skundrich. He's able to create this in this fantastic ball from Baird. But lane store, look at him lay out for that. But watch this, they're just baiting that pass into Balana. Skundrich does enough to dispossess him, goes straight to Baird, and Baird could have taken that shot. We see that all season long. Players taking shots from improbable angles that will never convert. Doesn't do that, goes to back across and Langsdorf decides to lunge his body off and puts it in the corner. The difference between Stanford and the Zips right now is in the attacking third. When they break pressure, they go hard to the net. Yeah, great point. They are direct. They want to get the goal and they want to get there quickly. 14th of the year for Langsdorf. Does it via a wow factor diving header after wonderful work from Corey Baird. So Akron now have to seek out the game's next goal. 26th minute is the time of this goal.
St. Jack will knock it back now for Akron. Coutinho goes back to Lund. Skundrich knocks it forward. Trying to bend it, but it'll, in the end, it's a tame effort there, handled easily by Lund. Let's take a look back at the game's first goal in the 26th minute. Well, the Zips like to possess out of the back. We see Balana trying to hit a little dink ball in the center, not realizing how close Skundrick was. And because the Zips were expanded, trying to build out of the attack, they get caught with too many gaps in between their defensive space, and Stanford makes them pay. Hansdorf was a lot of fun to talk to yesterday. Very animated, uh, <laughs> for sure. Just like the way he plays on the field, but he was defended quite a bit by his coach saying look that he brings so much with his movement and mobility and it's not just the guy who runs there's a, there's a, a method to the madness and, and the application of the type of movement that he makes and you know, he was a striker on the move there that got on the end of that cross well, he just brings energy and with that energy comes goals and he carries others with him yeah, how much he does off the ball both when they are in possession and without it Sam game for down. Bryce Marion. Baird will turn away from the pressure. Oh, they almost wanted it in a good area there. Stuart Holthusen almost got on the end of that. He would have been primed to attack there, but it will be driven out by Nico Corti. Redshirt senior from Westlake Village, California. How do they get that man in the game more? Stuart Holthusen. They need to play a little bit quicker and find him earlier. Right now he's trying to sit in between the two center backs. And I don't, to me, he doesn't know if he's checking back for the ball. If they're going to let to hit him long. They're a little bit out of their rhythm because they're so disconnected. Can the midfield get a little bit higher up positionally and try to connect with them a little bit? Stanford sits in those pockets that make it so difficult to hit those penetrating passes. The only time it worked for Wake Forest in beating the lines of pressure that Stanford has when they hit balls at an angle on the half turn. It didn't allow Stanford enough time to sit in those pockets. Big ball towards Langsdorf. Lunt comes out. There's a cartwheel. Gets upended. And the big six foot six goalkeeper. It's a spin there. Got slightly undercut there by Langsdorf, who was not going to give up. Tipping down towards the 15 minute mark. Lunt comes out for this ball. And Langsdorf, you see him tip over. They're both going for it. Langsdorf doesn't think he's coming out for it. It wasn't intentional, but a good call by the referee. Langsdorf had all eyes on trying to track the flight of the ball. Well, and honestly, it's surprising that Lunt came up for that. That ball was hanging up. It wasn't a, It wasn't between the 12 and the 6. It was just kind of hanging up a little bit high. I'm surprised he came out for that ball. Mr. Langsdorf, as advertised, coming into this with 13 goals, has gotten the opening goal here in Chester. Stanford, two-time defending national champions with a 1-0 lead over Akron. Got a change here now for Akron as we will bring on Nick Hines. Out will go Zajac. Devere now. Hines brings some speed. Likes to go route one a little bit. Can they find him in that space? 
in behind the back line, behind Beeson. Schultz got pushed away there. Quick free kick here from Hines. The run was inside from Gainford, and the ball was hit behind him. Coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the Men's College Cup Championship Sunday, 1 p.m. on ESPN2. For more information on the NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And right now, Stanford with a 1-0 lead over Akron here in the first half. That is your goal score. Foster Langsdorf came into the Stanford program originally as a defensive midfielder. Does have a work rate that uh, I can definitely see, goes through the roof. I can see why you'd want him as a defensive midfielder because you know he'd run everywhere. But there takes a certain type of discipline where you sit. Yeah, and I was going to say, that may be bit. the reason why you might not want no, him as but, a defensive but you, midfielder. But then you miss out on all that energy up top. You miss out on somebody that just kind of is optimistic about every single ball, even when there's no reason to be. And he's able to get on to stuff that other people are just like, eh, that's not going to go anywhere. But he's fast, he's quick, and he's smart, so he's able to get there and read it that's the most the reason why he's pac-12 leading goal scorer yeah, last year was pac-12 player of the year he had five shots against wake forest he is a senior but it's also the service he's getting the balls that stanford hit they're so threatening they're always direct or they're a little bit of an angle it makes it easy for a forward to know where you're going to play it when you know the style it's usually always going to be. And they're not looking for you to play back to pressure all the time. And this time he wisely kind of holds himself up, takes the contact, earns the free kick. So another subtle nice moment there from Foster Langsdorf. Fouled by Moutinho. Now Moutinho's already been spoken to once by the referee with a little interaction with Baird. be interesting to watch that all game long the freshman from Portugal you get to see the marking up right now Stanford has an extra player on the back post not marked right now is Beeson Go into that area. Last touch by Akron here. It's Stanford in possession. And they're going to earn another corner here. The work done there by Tanner Beeson. Had a goal against Coastal Carolina. He was behind uh, the very talented Brandon Vincent for a large part of his college career. And of course, Brandon Vincent going on to the Chicago Fire. Waldeck will come on for Werner now. and will promptly come over and take this corner. So good work from Sam Werner. Had one of the goals at Wake Forest in the Elite Eight. First time ball to the back post that created a little bit of danger there, but it'll go out for a goal kick for Akron here now. Most NCAA Division I championships here. And look at Stanford and UCLA tied at 114. Uh, UCLA picking up a water polo title. Stanford, the women won it. And as we talked to all the Stanford <laughs> players, including Foster Langsdorf and their coach Jeremy Gunn, they said, hey, they've got us motivated here. It's, now it's our turn. Well, I love just the different answers from the three players that we spot, spoke to. They said, one, oh, we're so supportive. We're great of it. 
And then another player is like, yeah, but it pushes us. Now we got to compete. We got to get one, two now so they don't have the bragging rights. And just that constant competition not only have within their team, but as well as within the, the program athletic department. Yeah, we spoke to Drew Skundrich, Foster Langsdorf, and Tomas Hilliard Arce. Aaron's ball is blocked now, but it really has been a first half that's uh, pretty much all about Stanford right now. Hines trying to get turned there and open things up. Down to the ground goes Drew Skundrich, the captain, one of the big leaders of Stanford. Little, uh, action going on there between Nick Hines and Logan Pancho. Pancho will win this, he'll knock it forward. It's knocked down by Baird. Here's Bryce Marion. Gundrich from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And this cross, an errant ball, will go out for a goal kick for Akron now. Really having a hard time getting their engines going here. They have Cordero isn't able to connect with the forwards. When you see them at their best, they're playing off Gainsford. They're playing off Holt Hughes. And they're going in and out from one side to the other. There's no change of point. There's no speed on the ball in which they're playing. And if you notice, Martino isn't able to set play, usually loves to hit those long diagonal outlet passes or little slip balls in the midfield, and Stanford is clogging up all those channels. So the question is, who else is going to step up in that? Charlie Weehan, a freshman, has come on for Stanford. And out went Bryce Marion. Bryce Marion, a senior as well. Team with a lot of experience here in NCAA College Cups, last two. Stanford, of course, Akron was here two years ago. I think without a doubt here, Akron needs the game's next goal. Strachan put under pressure. Balana now. Hackworth will work a nice give and go here. Quickly pressed, he keeps it moving. Again, very disruptive. This overall collective pressing game from Stanford. And you had mentioned yesterday, Kate, that they had to get their their foot, get the ball off their feet a lot quicker against a team of this caliber. They have, and especially you don't want Stanford going up because they have the experience, they have the edge and the mental aspect. They are one of the most dominant tournament teams in the past four years. In fact, the most winningest team in the past four years with Carolina at number two. This is a team that knows how to play one goal up. Despite that errant pass, they are showing us that they also are a good, very possession-oriented team. More changes here from Stanford. Amir Bashti will come on, and he does create a lot of things himself. Most successful programs in the last four years. Look at them. And by the way, they're all here this weekend. Indiana and North Carolina provide us a wonderful second semifinal. So Bashti on, bared off for Stanford. Too slow, too slow, bringing it back, allowing numbers of Stanford to get back and get organized. Watch the difference between when the forwards for the Zips get the ball and when the forwards from Stanford get the ball. Watch, forward every single time. Come Stanford now, trying to break through there was the sub we had. Everything just a bit, just that bit quicker from Stanford today. Circulation of the ball, thinking, closing people down. It's all just that little bit quicker. Look at the energy that is being put in here to prevent Akron from getting out of their own half of the field. And it's led to this big giveaway, top of the box now. 
played in. It's Basti trying to get a shot off. It's in the end blocked by Moutinho. And everything going according to plan right now for the Stanford Cardinal. Which a play now, more from Stanford here. They've got players in the box. Bit of an awkward clear here, and it's still not clear. Ball whipped in towards the far post over everybody. It'll go out for a goal kick for Akron now. Hey, Saturday, we have a trifecta of events for you on ESPN. Four Eastern, one Pacific MLS Cup, Toronto FC in Seattle. All the stars coming out in that one, including Jovinko, Vasquez, Dempsey, Ladero, and then at 8, the Heisman Trophy presentation. And then on the 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, it's top-ranked boxing. The WBO Junior Lightweight title fight, fight at between Vasily Lomachenko and Guillermo Rigondeau. Everything on ESPN and the ESPN app. Devera. Not been able to get forward quite as much as he would like. Cordero tried to tease that ball over the top of Musharafa. But to your point, Kate, even when they get into the Stanford half, Stanford looks pretty settled defensively. Not most of touches, but watch, all the touches are back. It's always away from the defender, but then you're going into that midfield line that has done such a great job for the Cardinal in recovering. They all know the roles. They know exactly where they need to be. So you just wonder when that switch is going to hit for the Zips. When are they going to turn over and be like, hey, we need a little bit more edge in our attack. We need our possession to be a bit more penetrative. But even when they're trying to hit the long ball over the top, they under hit it. They're not even dinking in behind the back line. We've seen them hit three long balls and all of them been short. Devera. Nick Hines will go back to Devera again. Here's Matinho now. It's a nice ball from Matinho, but earlier to Arce took up a great defensive position on Holthusen. Here's what's coming up at the half. We've got the preview of number seven, North Carolina, number two, Indiana. And a men's soccer coaching legend hangs it up uh, after 31 years. A nice little special we have there. Langsdorf's header leading the Cardinal here in the first half. I'll give a little hint on who that coaching legend is. He won a national championship here in 2013. Fighting Irish, just saying. I knew, I knew you wouldn't be able to. I knew you wouldn't be able to contain yourself. I knew it. I guess the cat's out of the bag. Bobby Clark, <laughs> coaching legend. Real uh, big piece of the college game and the game of soccer in this country over his entire career. Nico Cordy has not really been challenged in goal here at all for Stanford. It's been a very comfortable first half. Cordero, good switch of play from him. Now, can they up the tempo here? Doesn't happen quick enough. It's almost like Stanford's got a 12th player on the field, cutting off all these passing lanes. But also, who's that one from the Zips that is making that sacrificial, pushing the back line run in behind? No one's doing that. They all want to come back to the ball. First half is going to come to an end, and if you look at this 45 minutes, this has been a first half where Stanford has controlled and managed Akron. Well, they've been more dangerous, and their disruptive pressing is what's creating the chances Zips have not been able to adapt yet. Let's go down to the head coach of the Stanford Cardinal, Jeremy Gunn. Jeremy, thank you very much for joining us here in the first half. Get your uh, initial impressions here on the first 45. I think the first half was ours, wasn't it? Obviously, we were one nil up, but I think we played some great soccer and we created the best chances for sure. Coach, you have such great disruption in the midfield and then attacking forward. Who up top has been a priority for you and help leading that charge? 
For right, well, we've got two guys up top, Foster and Corey, they've been doing it. Um, no, it, the, the front six are pressed really well. They haven't been able to settle. I think second half, that if they persist trying to build out of there, if, if we don't get into them as well, then they might get a little bit happier. But um, no, the whole group's been pressing really well. But also, when we've had the ball, we've played some lovely stuff. Jeremy, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you, guys. That's Jeremy Gunn. Jared Emick has a lot of work cut out for him. Stanford, a dominant first half with a 1-0 lead over Akron. The 2017 Men's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. As we welcome you back to Chester, Pennsylvania. We are joined now by Akron head coach Jared Embeck. Jared, thank you very much for the time. What'd you tell your team in the locker room here at halftime? I said, uh, you know, we're only down one. We didn't play our game. We let them rattle us. And, you know, we got to respond. And we're one play away from making this a whole new game. Hey, coach, how exactly do you respond and try to get a goal back against a very organized Stanford side? Yeah, I, I think we had to go back to, you know, the, the important things, the little things, you know, tackles, getting the loose ball, stuff that help you get control of the game and turn the tide and momentum. And, you know, they beat us to a lot of things. They were the aggressors. And, you know, if we're going to get back into it, we're going to have to change that part of the game. Coach, we wish you the best of luck in the second half. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. That's Jared Embick, the coach of Akron. So the Cardinal with a 1-0 lead here, set up here uh, 45 minutes where they have been in command here in the second half over Akron. So we'll see now, Kate, if Akron can respond here to a big challenge. Well, that's something they've only done once all year. Only coming back from a one-goal deficit took them to the second overtime to then prevail in victory. I guess ends SI Edwardsville. So this isn't a team that's practiced in having to overcome an uphill climb especially against a team that's so aggressive as Stanford. Stanford's game plan was to make sure the Zips had to put their head down because their pressure was so intense and so high. And they did that. Check the box. Excellent first half. Cardinal in the red and black hoops. And in the all-white is Akron. Your referee was Robert Sabiga. And a night where it is in the mid-30s here. Chester, Pennsylvania, about 16 miles outside of downtown Philadelphia. But it has been all Cardinal here looking to do what only one team has done before, and that is Virginia under Bruce Arena, win three straight NCAA titles. Here's Cordero now. Gets it out wide. Zajac, Cordero. 18 is Nate Schultz. Big switch of play here from Strachan, the freshman. And Devera driving it forward here, and that's... Uh, a show of an effort, though, that Akron certainly needs is a bit of thrust here in some areas of the field. And they're starting the second half a bit differently. Harder's not in. Instead, Hackworth, who came in as a sub, is now back up next to Cordero. He provides a little bit more defensive spark, a little bit quicker, and a little bit more direct in his play. Hit an early ball there to the feet of Sam Gainford. Ten goals on the year. Gainford not uh, that impressionable in the first half. Cordero with some great work and somehow got out of that. As elusive as could be here. If they can keep things moving here, they can get it to Schultz, but they don't. It'll be switched right back into the flow of defenders. And Stanford now. Big moment for Akron. They've got to turn some possession into chances here in the second half. Against the defending national champions. Bryce Marion. What Manuel Cordero has been everywhere in midfield here trying to stem this tide and change things here. Maybe a chance here. Off his line is Nico Cordy. And Zajac is upset, thinking that Cordy came out, studs up, looking for something from the referee. Now this is a little bit of reversal of fortune. 
trying to play to Hilliard Arce, a soft back pass, and Zaytrak trying to get something on it. Cordy knows he can't get his hands down in time, does just enough to clear it. Nothing wrong with that play. Well, for a guy who was not called into much action in the first half, how alert is he to make that big play? Nico Cordy, who took over for Andrew Epstein, the All-American. Very rarely at halftime do I see goalkeepers come out and start doing purposefully upper 90 high dives just to get warm back up. He was doing that, so he was prepping himself just in case he was called upon. But already Cordero's work rate defensively has changed in the first half from the second. He is the one that is creating dispossessive moments for the Zips. Now the question is, can there be more of them from other players? He's the type of guy that can maybe be the fulcrum to try and change a game around. He is from Porto, Portugal. Balana now, it's not weighted enough, and it's won back again by Stanford in this very dangerous area. They will go right at you. It's Langsdorf. Skundrich, Gilby. And getting there first is Zajac. Can Akron get off and running here? Got a couple of players in front of the ball. And some tremendous work there from Tanner Beeson to slow down that counterattack. Devera now with the outside of his foot. So there is a little bit more life, it seems, here in Akron Cape. A little bit more proactive with their defending, stepping in those passing channels, disrupting it with a little bit of a body challenge on every single pass now. Cordero, one pass away from it is broken up. Now Akron pushing back Stanford here to start the second half. Clock does tick down in the college game. If you're subbed out here in the second half, you are allowed to re-enter once. He's got Marion to his right. He brings him in. Langsdorf at the tip of the spear. There's good running out wide here. And joining in is Pancho, but in the end, there's some good defending here from Akron. 8.45, our second semifinal. The Tar Heels making their way into the house here in their eighth College Cup appearance under their head coach, Carlos Samuano. They will take on Todd Yegley and Indiana. It's coming up at 8.45. Ben Luntz, who came up with two very big saves in the first half, played in the youth program of Hertha Berlin. Out of play at winner, it'll be a throw in here for Akron. Bryce Marion has grown into that wide role. Cypress, Texas, a senior, five assists on the year for him. Enjoyed coming back to Houston, Texas last year to win a national championship. Marion wins it off the throw. Oh, it's a chance here to make it two. It's a great move from Baird. Shot is deflected over the top. Lunt again coming up big for the third time tonight here for Akron. Corey Baird close to getting a second. Just a handful. Watch his movement. Right now he's starting central. Looks over his shoulder trying to see the space. Knows no one there. Takes that touch across the top foot. And Lunt again coming big off his line. Known, knowing that the speed a Baird was not gonna, something this defender's gonna be able to handle. At the corner, this time it's attacked by Holth Houston. Bryce Marion puts it back into the box. The offside flag was up on Tomas Hilliard Arce. Quick restart from Lund.
Gainford is fouled. It'll be a free kick for Akron. This gun just kicked the ball away. Going to get those talking to from the referee. Jeremy Gunn did a remarkable job when he got the, the Stanford gig, making this a more competitive program. Kind of said to us, he said, look, a lot of good soccer players, a little bit casual, free-flowing. He's, he's really, really ratcheted up the competitive side of this program. Yeah, there's little complacency, and that's the reason why they're back here again. Back-to-back 2015-2016, -back and now trying to go for a three-peat. But when you talk to the players, they also conveyed it. They're not satisfied. It was interesting. He, he spoke to us yesterday, and you know, you, you posed the question, how do you get people hungry to continue to win championships? And he said we set some individual goals for people, but we also were reminded that even when you win a championship, there are things that can be better and can be improved. Well, this is what I liked. I asked the players, how does your coach exactly do that? And they do. They have a win sheet in their locker room and they're ranked on how many wins that they have. And it reminded me of some of the most competitive programs that I've been a part of and have heard of, is you know exactly where you stand based on that one through 24, what your winning percentage is. And you don't want to be at the bottom of that pile because you know that correlates to playing time. Yeah, post it in the locker room where you're walking in every day and seeing it. Robert Sabiga with a few words there for Corey Baird. 26-minute goal from Foster Langsdorf is a different Stanford a 1-0 lead over Akron. Good area to get the ball back here. Holthusen. Gainford. And again, in the end, after winning the ball in a good area, not even a shot executed here in the end for Akron. Missing a little bit of that killer instinct here. And all this possession lead to creating some clear chances. looking up and they just don't see a lot of space to play through Stanford. Big tackle there from Skundrich who's doing all the dirty work. Baird tries to drop it into Langsdorf. Second ball, Marion trying to get there and cleared by the aggressive Joao Moutinho. Moutinho was a part of the Sporting Lisbon Academy in Portugal. Wonderful young man. We had a great opportunity to speak with him yesterday. Schultz. There's a nice early ball. The idea to get it in there quickly. A ball from Morgan Hackworth. Zajac. Schultz from Mayfield, Ohio. Strachan. We're named uh, Embic. Strachan mature beyond his years as a freshman center back. Baird. Langsdorf. Over the top. Lunt will come off his line for the zips. And this is where they need space in behind running. That was it. That was the moment. Just under hit once again. Yet Stanford pulled out of position. Over the top again. This is direct play here. It's Langsdorf behind Baird. Lunt is going to get there. It's fun to watch Martino and Langsdorf go at it. To Mac Herman semifinalist. One is senior Motinho, all of 156 pounds. Bending off Langsdorf, just uses his body. So far, they each have one up on each other, getting onto the end of those balls that are dumped in. There's 
uh, a list of Matt Herman's semifinalists who will be playing tonight. And you can see all four teams represented. Big center back Grant Lillard of Indiana. Cam Lindley, a wonderful midfielder, will be on display for North Carolina. NCAA Men's College Cup is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live differently. Here's a big switch of play now. Zajac, touch is too long. Leads to a big swing on that tackle. It'll deflect out for a goal kick, but Akron just not sharp enough in the final third here tonight. Broken up by Tanner Beeson. This is a well-timed tackle as well. Beeson held off a little bit, not sure if he's going to touch it long or cut it in. Realized it was a bit of an errant touch. Interesting change here now. Zajac will go off, a more technical player. David Egbo, who's more of a pro-typical number nine target man up front, will come on. Maybe this is the way to stir the game up a little bit, Kate. And he also likes to make those more direct runs. You don't see many players from the Zips that get the ball and go root one a little bit. And even if it doesn't work out for them, they're pushing the back line of the Cardinal further away, creating a little gap in the midfield for someone like Cordero to operate in. Igbo now, Hilliard Arce will nod it back and follow it back to his goalkeeper, Nico Corti. By the way, Corti coming up with a very big save at the beginning of this half after a loss of possession. So only had to make one play tonight here. But he came up very big. Lunt. Breakaway here is Holthusen now coming up to put the fire out as always there is number 12, Drew Skundrich. What an engine he has in midfield for Stanford. Schultz, Cordero. Nice slipped in pass, Cordero, Hackworth. Egbo, he has a shooting opportunity, it's pushed aside, empty net, saved again, unbelievable from Nico Cordy. Double save there. What a chance for Akron to get back in it. He denies both Egbo and Devera. Get to see the impact of Egbo right away. Just moving the center backs with one touch. Gordy gives up a rebound to Vera, not able to keep it away from him, just hitting it a little bit more direct and straight. Gordy coming up huge. Watch that first touch. The first time moving a center back out of position. But look how quick Gordy recovers and gets low. He's third in the NCAA with goals allowed. He's able to make that big save in critical moments. Put a circle around that. Nico Cordy, with all his teammates getting all the plaudits here tonight, has come up with two very big saves here in the second half. Going off for Sanford is, or coming back on, uh, Weldeck comes on for Werner. Bellana trying to turn out of there is going to earn a free kick. Let's go down to uh, coming up second half, uh, second part of our doubleheader, Indiana, North Carolina. Let's go down to Indiana head coach Todd Yegley. Todd, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's just uh, kind of reiterate uh, some of the things you said yesterday. How up and how ready is Indiana for this tournament? 
the guys are ready. They, they've uh, we've had a great schedule to prepare them for this moment, and they're confident. Uh, they're excited. I think they're loose um, right where we want them to be in this big game. But UNC is uh, extremely talented. So it's going to be a great challenge for us. Back to you in a second here, Coach. We're just see, uh, seeing out Akron here uh, on this attack. And Stanford here trying to clear their lines now. Uh, tell us a little bit about North Carolina and maybe the, the things you're focusing on when it comes to your opponent. Well, one, they're talented all over the field. They're very technical. Um, they play out of the 3 4 3, and each player on the field can, can play. They like to have the ball, they like to possess, and they make the field really big, touchline at touchline. So, our ability to kind of dictate where we want to press and, and step out and, and, and pick them at, at their key moments. Um, and then us taking care of the ball because I, I don't think they like not having it. So, uh, it's going to be a bit of a tease at times because there'll be moments for us that we can get behind them and we need to. But other times we need to take care of it and gain some gain some territory and pin them back a little bit because they'll get five in the back pretty quick uh, when they morph into a, a kind of a five uh, five in the back system. Well, Todd, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks for your time both yesterday and today ahead of your semifinal match. Thank you. All right, that's Todd Yegley, uh, son of the legendary Jerry Yegley, and Indiana has had an outstanding season. They will take on North Carolina at 8:45. Another match you won't want to miss it. Tremendous amount of talent uh, littered amongst those two teams as well. And here's Akron. They're getting a good push here, Kate. They are just inching slowly up the field through possession. But really, it's what's happening between that 25 towards goal. Here's Edbo now. Had that wonderful chance. He's cut it back onto his left. Here's still Edbo. He's going to push it out wide. Akron in a good area here to maybe get things tied up. Pushed away was Gameford. Here's Devera now. Devera to the end line. We'll try to square it back to the far post. Holthusen got ahead on it. So did Hilliard Arce for Stanford and they'll whack it out over the halfway line here as Akron's pressure continues here. You get to see the difference there between Gainford a little bit slow in this penetration gets shut down by the excellent 1v1 defending of Pancho but then DeVere with a long touch a little bit quicker speed he's able to get something off that speed of play is what they need in order to break down and unlock this incredibly organized Stanford side as well as Igbo's movement you're starting to see the center backs getting shifted a little bit which is creating some gaps for him to play in. Moutinho gets run over there by Langsdorf Langsdorf, it's basically a three-on-one here of Stanford hurries. Got to be offside. Boshti was offside. Making the run at the far post. A golden opportunity for Stanford to get a second, Kate. Well, Boshti, the sub, comes in, and he brings something a little bit different to the table, a little different skill set. Just got a little too eager in advance of the pass and advance of the defender. Boy, that is a, that is a huge missed opportunity for goal number two for Stanford. No, not the outside. Good turn in midfield here from Bolana. Bo has made a real difference coming on for Akron here. He's kind of made them grow a couple of inches here, Kate. Or Darrow trying to lace it in, cut out by Beeson. Devera. Hilliard Arce. Cordero now. Schultz will drive it in and it's hit over the top. More push from Akron. Saturday, an afternoon doubleheader of hoops. Number one, Duke taking on Boston College at noon Eastern from Chestnut Hill. Then it's Indiana and Louisville. Both games are on ESPN. And streaming live on the app. So a great day of college basketball ahead. Devera had that wonderful chance that was denied. 
by Nico Cordy. Weehan will come back on. He came on in the first half for Corey Baird. All-time meeting, Zachron in three games have won twice and drawn once. So it'll be the first time Stanford, if they can pull this off, first time they've ever beaten Akron. Beeson steps up, the left back. Devera will stick this one into the crowd. We have seen Akron provide a little bit of a push here against Jared Gilby and Stanford. Twenty-six minute goal from Foster Langsdorf is the difference here in Chester, Pennsylvania. Now Stanford uh, getting a little uh, much needed possession here of their own now. Gundrich curls it in. Headed out by Moutinho. Cardinal have gotten it wide. They whip it in towards the six. It's flicked away there by Strachan. All of a sudden now, Stanford getting to every second ball here. They're going to get another cross whipped in here. Langsdorf throwing himself at it. I'll make that. Charlie Weehan. Well, Charlie Weehan, the sub coming in, the under-18 national team captain, came in on the right, and he's finding himself able to get penetration in. But the reason why the Cardinal has had that sustained attack has been the defensive play of Scuntrich. He is picking up all those out-of-pressure long balls that Matinho and the back line are hitting, and he's playing them quickly one touch. And he's creating this umbrella of players around him because he's cleaning up everything and not letting the Zips get out of their own defensive end. Cordero, nothing there. Skundrich has picked up a fortuitous ball. He'll miss hit it with the outside of his left foot. Schultz has had an outstanding season at right back, called by his head coach, Jared Embick, one of the best in the nation at that position. Gainford in pursuit. Sam Gainford from Liverpool, England. Ten goals, five assists on the year. Moved to Liverpool as a young man to join the Liverpool Academy from 10 to 18 years of age. He made it very clear he's a huge Liverpool fan. Skundrich trying to drive forward. Boshti. Devera trying to break out. They try to grab him. He's... Broken out here now, and can Akron maybe get a few players in front of the ball or maybe get this switched? Try the big switch, but out of play it goes. It'll be a throw in for Stanford here, ticking down towards 18 minutes left here in the second half. Seventh coach in Akron history, Jared Embick. Sam Warner will make his way back on for Gilby here for Stanford. How does Akron wrestle this back now, Kate? They need to get more numbers in the attack. They've moved Holthusen away from the center number nine position to bring on Egbo. But Holthusen is now so disconnected. He's not your typical winger, not one to get end line. More uses movement to get in between center backs. 
So somehow figure out a way where he can be successful. He's your leading goal scorer. Bashti now, who's very lively. Contact from Cordero, he goes down. Cordero has really worked uh, tremendously hard here tonight. One of the emotional leaders of Akron. Came to Akron in 2015. Got Hilliard Arce up on the back post. Trying to decide if they can hit it from that range or not. services headed away with, uh, faints and variations uh, off that free kick Skundrich makes space for himself coming back with Schultz who got a very vital touch and it goes back to Lunt and through his distribution is trying to push his team forward Tremendous to keep possession under pressure here. And then ultimately it's cut out by Bellana. Time now beginning to prey on the minds of Akron here as it continues to tick down. Great initial push here in this second half. Have chances from Egbo, uh, the double save from Cordy on Egbo and Devera. Here's Devera now. It's Cordero. Nice pocket of space for him. Gets it out wide. Holt Houston clips it into the box, headed away by Stanford. That's just never going to work. You have to have pinpoint precision passes when you're dumping it into the box like that. Other that's an Otherwise, it's an immediate counterattack ball. I would love to see Cordero. The difference right there is, what if he's the one who takes it up and takes that long range shot, forcing someone to come and step to him, and perhaps then if he wants to dump it off, he can hit it in that space of which the defender just left. Oh, nice little move there. That's Holf Houston. It's an early ball in, but uh, having a beat on it all the way is Nico Cordy. Egbo was the target in there. And he did change the game. As Jared Embick, Embick has told us that he could change the game. He did for a nice portion of time there, which Akron did not capitalize on chances. Here's Bashti now. Langsdorf at the tip of the spear now for the Cardinal. He's got the game's lone goal. Waldock. Waldock went back to Skundrich. It's cut out. Chance to break out here now. This is where Akron needs to up the tempo. Cordero gets caught in possession. It's a huge play. Cordero throws a player down. It's right in front of Sabiga. Who's going to let this one go. Right in front of the fourth official as well. doesn't need four or five passes back here they need to get it forward as quick as possible and this is promising here a nice turn here from Gainford Devera who's been powering forward on this left side throughout the night tries to get the cross and it's blocked by Stanford Moutinho and Langsdorf continue that great battle you've liked to watch here tonight Kate it's going to be fun to watch Matino develop in the college game. 
He plays beautiful soccer, has a little bit of edge to him. Recruited as a midfielder, asked him to play center back. And he's getting tested defensively against Foster Langsdorf, whose movement, and not just his physicality, but his movement is so offsetting. He sets you up in advance by doing a counter movement, and then his teammates know that, and they play him to the space that opposite of that. And the best example of that is on the goal. We get to see us dispossessed in the goal. All comes from Skundrix, reads it perfectly. Watch Baird unselfishly jumps in. Watch it, he pulls the center back out of position and then comes into the space, takes that two steps to the left, knowing he's gonna go to the right. And as a center back, that is so hard to defend because you have to watch the ball and you have to watch the player on your back post. You end up on your heels. You're not able to be proactive with your movement and get something physical, a body on that player to disrupt the ball. That was a nice angle of it because it showed uh, Great job, Langsdorf on the blind side of Strack and the defender and was totally on the move when he produces the diving header. And that is the lone goal and that's right now is the difference. Ticking down towards 11 minutes left here in Chester, Pennsylvania. The first of two semifinals. Azan Kasey has also come on for Akron now. Skundrich just gliding through midfield here. It's picked up here and whipped in. Oh, what a hit. It's a huge hit. It's a huge goal. It comes from Sam Werner. And this may propel. The Stanford Cardinal into the national championship game on Sunday. But you know where that comes from? It comes from Skundrich, able to dispossess. The ball doesn't go exactly where it wants to, gets aided by deflection, and just an excellent vision, finish. Coach says he has always contributed to the team, but this year he has terrorized defenses, had a breakout year. Watch that excellent separating touch Gets the defender to come commit to him, Skahan, and then pushes it past him and just nails it across the far post. Fourth of the year for Werner. It is huge. Nate Schultz of Akron had an opportunity to clear it and break that play up. And they pounce on the mistake and they make the Zips pay for it. And the mountain to climb here with 11 minutes and a few seconds in change has become a big one. Do you know who that was? Skundrich on the first goal, Skundrich on the second goal. Always creating something from a midfield position. Called by his coach, Jeremy Gunn, the unsung hero, very humble kid. Uh, the engine room. Gunn saying the ground that he covers every game is amazing. There'll be another player in the second game that is very similar, Moore, who sits in front of Indiana's back line. He's the one player when they ask him in a 4v4, every player on the team, who you want on your 4v4 team, every single player picks him. Skundrich is the same type. Does all the dirty work, makes everyone around him better. Baird coming back on for Stanford. like that you're getting us ready for game number two like North I was, I was, I was little, little crumbs a little bread comes for you yeah Hoosiers and Tar Heels coming up next Jeremy Gunn and Stanford sitting on a 2-0 lead here against Akron Werner gets it forward Cordero Moutinho now trying to join in and get the attack going here for Akron. Hilliard Arce will head away. Towards the halfway line. This is going to turn Akron back again. Coverage of the NCAA championships continues with Monday's, uh, with Men's College Cup Championship, excuse me, on Sunday, December 10th, 1 p.m. 
on ESPN2. For more information on NCAA Men's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. So right now the Cardinal have one foot in that final at 1 p.m. on ESPN2 this Sunday. Cross whipped into the near post, nobody there, and Nico Cordy will pounce on it. And Kate, we have to go back to the key saves that he made at the beginning of the second half, uh, or this could be very different. It would have been 1-1, one, one, and the Zips would have had some confidence. We would get to see if they could have then impose their will by keeping the ball and building it patiently forward, which is what they prefer to do. And with their players, that's really what they're equipped to do. But he came up huge in a big moment in his first real competitive year where he is the main starter. Akron coming in with an international flair to their team, 14 players born in foreign countries. Nate Schultz will switch play here, Devera. If Akron can pick a goal off here, they might make it interesting for this final seven minutes and change. Langsdorf spins out of there quickly. Skundrich. Devera's fouled. It'll be a free kick for Akron who need to get it forward here quickly. Nico Devera giving it a good run there out on the left side, the senior. He's really stood out, hasn't he, for the Zips. Able to create some speed, run onto the ball with a little bit of space. Portland Timbers Academy. Remember these players have affiliations with Major League Soccer teams, which again, by the way, tomorrow, it's Seattle and Toronto FC for the MLS Championship and the MLS Cup. Wild swing at that from Sam Werner. And second goal has siphoned uh, a bit of the life out of Akron here. forwards here really keeping three back here right now making it a hard time for Akron to get here to the halfway line but that's where all the spaces is a little bit out wide in the end this ball that's easily cut out by Stanford Egbo trying to get there Skundrich Langsdorf and picked up there by Ben Lunt. Neither team right now really able to hold much possession here. It continues to be a bit of a back and forth here, but that goal from Sam Warner his fourth of the year so decisive here giving Stanford a 2-0 lead he's going to get a break here Waldeck will come back on this performance from Stanford does that make them the favorites in this entire tournament well dominant performance and here they're looking for a third here driving into the box He's so Mr. They call him Mr. Reliable, and you see why. Making contributions on the attack, but then coming up with the big saves on defense. Corey Baird once again making the run. But a constant nuisance. Uh, tonight on ESPN, Scott Van Pelt hosts the Midnight Eastern Sports Center following the Celtics Spurs game. He'll examine how the Cavs turned their slow start into a franchise record winning streak. Plus, Kevin Durant 
on how he's taking charge of the Warriors and Steph Curry's absence. And Army head coach Jeff Mockin joining the show on the eve of the most storied rivalry in college football. Sports Center with SVP on ESPN and the ESPN app. And in our hotel, we've seen a lot of uh, the Army fans and the Navy fans. That one, uh, such a cool, historic college football match. Better say game. some conversation with some of the Army and Navy fans in the lobby today and very excited to be here in Philadelphia. It's always nice and cold for them too. Time running out for Jared Embick and Akron. Coming into this one tonight at 18-3-2 and in an outstanding season. Started the year off losing their t first two matches. Trying to pull one back here. Motinho's shot didn't strike it well, even though he found a pocket of space. But it's not for lack of effort from that man. Joao Motinho, the Akron center back. Nate Schultz can't control it. No hurry is Stanford here. now in a decent attacking posture flying forward there was Kasey game for Kasey now and it's broken up again who's back working there was Corey Baird on the defensive side yeah essentially became a one front with Langsdorf up top everyone else contributing defensively Moutinho will get it wide Cassay now. Moutinho. Nice to whip it in the box. Maybe that was a shot. In the end, it's not very effective. Well, it doesn't have the most powerful shot, but you know what? There's nothing else open. Anytime they try the little dink passes that are the five and six give and goes, Stanford's so well organized, and the movement isn't there to pull people out of position that those channels are opened up. So that is the only option. Stanford going to make more changes. Your game's winning goal currently being held right now by Foster Langsdorf. More changes here. Bob Stieg will come on. Langsdorf will go off. Credited with the game-winning goal here tonight. Clock is stopped with 44 seconds left. Stanford Cardinal fans in attendance, up cheering. Their team is looking for... A remarkable third straight national championship, and they will get, barring any unforeseen miracle here, to that national championship game on Sunday. Moutinho now besieged by Stanford defenders, tries the back heel. 20 seconds left. Into the box it comes. Cordy is fouled. It'll be a free kick, and that's going to do it. In the end, Stanford is going to go on to the national championship game for the third straight year. On Sunday, they will end it up with a 2-0 win over Akron. Well, their pressing defense created their opportunities for the attack. And when they had opportunities, they were so direct and clinical in how they created chances. Extremely dangerous every single time they entered the final third. Let's go down to Stanford head coach Jeremy Gunn. Jeremy, thanks again uh, for taking the time out here to join us. Uh, 
looks from up here a very comprehensive performance from your Cardinal. You must be very happy. Yeah, we, we played fantastic tonight. Um, you know, second half, it was Akron, got a little bit happier at the beginning of the second half, and that, that was a real worry. But the great thing was we, we dug in at that time, and then we got playing again. So, um, no, no complaints tonight. I thought the boys were great. Obviously, Akron, a tremendous side, and um, our boys took well of them tonight. Now, from up here, he was really impressive to us and stood out with Skundrich, able to pick up every single outlet ball they tried to hit. Yeah, Tell it, us about it, the importance to, for him. It is, it is amazing. You know, so many other coaches don't, don't get the pleasure of seeing how great he is. He just does all of that extra work. Um, it's absolutely fantastic, yeah. Jeremy, congratulations. Third straight time you'll be in the NCAA final on Sunday, and we thank you for your time. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, that's Jeremy Gunn, the head coach of Stanford. They are the winners tonight over Akron 2-0. Here is the updated bracket. So Stanford awaits North Carolina in Indiana, which is coming up at 845. That's the final. Stanford Cardinal, 2-0 over Akron. They get goals from Foster Langdorf and Sam Werner. That does it here in Chester. Stanford 2-0 winners over Akron. Dominant performance here in every facet of the game. Coming up, we have more from Chester, Pennsylvania. Stanford, 2-0 winners over Akron. They go to the national championship.